Right, so now we want to discuss the various cloud types that there are. This is a simplified list um, by far. I've broken it down into four main categories for you that we're going to discuss, show you some examples. Cirrus, Stratus, Cumulus, and Nimbus. And we're going to show you what they look like. We're going to give you some um, uh, characteristics of them and uh, when possible we'll tell you what kind of weather uh, to expect because of them. So first, the cirrus clouds. Thin and wispy. These high clouds are often referred to as uh, mare's tails. You can see they kind of look like a horse's tail, real fine, long strands. Uh, these are ice crystals, and that's part of the reason you could see such definition in them, I think. Uh, it's just personal opinion. These are, generally speaking, uh, nice day clouds. Oh, not nice day clouds, huh? These are stratus clouds. Strata means layered, right? So these are flat, layered clouds. Generally, they're low, flat, layered clouds. Because they're low-level clouds, they're made of water drops. And I'm thinking, you know, what uh, these types of clouds can lead, lead to. Not always, though, right? It doesn't always end up raining when it looks like this. Sometimes it's just overcast sort of day. But it certainly can lead to rain. Ah, uh, my favorite. I think almost everybody's favorite. Short of thunderheads. I love thunderheads, but... Um, cumulus cloud. These are your happy little clouds, as they say. Uh, puffy clouds, cotton balls. Uh, these two are nice day clouds. I was just looking up now to see what what we had. Had some nice cumulus a little while ago, but uh, they're sort of merging together now and forming some stratus clouds. And... Uh, well, I don't want to get off topic yet. I'm going to come back to the fact that sometimes you could have multiple types of clouds out at once. All right. Uh, anyhow, these cumulus clouds uh, can merge together, grow uh, into storm clouds. But uh, when you see them looking like this, generally speaking, you've got a nice day ahead of you. Speaking of storm clouds, Nimbus, right? Nimbus means rain bearing. And uh, these come from cumulus clouds, and you may even have heard the word cumulonimbus, right? Which is a, uh, a mixture of the two there. These are most definitely going to give you some rain. Now, what's the difference between that? And that, I know you're thinking not a whole heck of a lot, huh? Uh, ideally, and I tried to pick a picture that you can see it, they still retain the cumulus sort of cotton ball shape, but they've all clustered together, and, and when we talk about them building, they're getting taller. All right, they're getting taller. And the other big difference, let me make sure it's evident, Eh, it's not super evident, but the other big difference is, see when these get so dark like this on the bottom? All right, here as well. What's happening is they're, they're getting so dense that the sunlight isn't coming through the, it isn't able to penetrate the cloud anymore. It's, it's literally not lighting up the cloud. Um, the clouds are white because the sun is, you know, kind of coming through and, and illuminating them from within while it looks dark at the bottom because the sunlight can't penetrate through there anymore. That's a very good sign when you see those dark bottoms. Okay, that's a very good sign that it's going to 
get wet soon. Again, not always, but pretty dang close to always. All right. Uh, when you're working on the uh, Cloud Lab, hopefully you saw something like this. I gave you a copy of this. Um, and this shows you how you can combine a whole bunch of terms um, and get beyond just the cumulus, stratus, nimbus, um, cirrus that I gave you. All right. And... Uh, it's tough to judge elevation. First and foremost, understand that when, with regard to your cloud journal, I don't go through and mark those right or wrong. I don't want you to be afraid to, to make guesses, uh, best, you know, educated guess, uh, as if you would, uh, as to, to what you think you're seeing. And I think I even tell you in the instructions, um, you know, feel free to put a couple names down. It's tough. Um, what we look for are the the overall shapes of the clouds. Uh, sometimes it's fairly obvious. Okay, you're not gonna see low cirrus clouds, but stratus, you know, um, they can show up even though it's not not on here. But exactly, but um, you could see stratus clouds at, at a couple different levels. Uh, cumulus for sure. All right, you see cumulus showing up here at high, uh, middle, and uh, and low clouds. Um, and you got stratocumulus, you got stratus, uh, you got nimbostratus. It gets it, it gets confusing. Again, I do not expect you to be cloud professionals, but I want you to try and get a good variety. Of, uh, of cloud examples there and if you get a chance be safe be safe about it but if you get a chance and you see a thunderhead out there we're almost out of the season for it unfortunately but if you see a thunderhead out there get a good picture of it I saw one over the summer and I could not capture it I was driving and uh, by the time we got ourselves organized to do so, I just wasn't facing the right way anymore. Or a hill or a tree or something was in the way. It just didn't work out. Um, but boy, when you see one of those, you'll, you'll definitely recognize it. So, just want to run back through these here. Um, as I started to say... And, and I know I've, I've paused and changed these slides so much on you guys already, I don't want to he do it again, but I could literally stick my phone up in the air right now, take a picture, and there'd be two or three different cloud types in that picture. Okay. Um, expect that. Okay. Don't get stressed out by that. Uh, feel free to crop your picture so we're only dealing with one cloud type at a time if you want to. Or just say, hey, I took this picture for this type of cloud and I think that's that in the background or something like that but uh, please you know do understand and, and I'm only saying this because I have people email me all the time um, wait how can I have this cloud when I have that cloud you could have all the clouds it's mother nature she does what she wants to right um, I'm sure there's some exclusionary principles out there but we certainly uh, wouldn't cover them at this at this level all right so Definitely, you can have multiple cloud types. So cirrus, thin and wispy clouds. Strata, layered. Cumulus, fluffy cotton balls. Nimbus, storm clouds. And I guess I saved my cumulonimbus picture for when we talk about uh, precipitation. Really should have one there. Speaking of precipitation... Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet. Yeah, there's more. There's hail. You heard of hail. Freezing rain. Gropple. What the heck is gropple? All right, well, we're going to learn what all of these are. Uh, if you couldn't tell the difference between, didn't know the difference between sleet and freezing rain, hopefully you will now. Um, there is a difference. And... Uh, 
Well, here we go. I'll actually go in order. Okay, so snow. Snow, as you probably know, are ice crystals. Beautiful crystals linked together in a lattice like structure. All right. Um, you may have heard that no two snowflakes are alike. That is not true. There are many, 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 many types out there. And, you know, you, you might not if you could figure out a way to, to look at snowflakes before they melt. And there are actually a couple pretty cool ways to do that. Um, but if you can, you know, study a whole bunch of them, you would apparently get some repeats eventually. Okay. Um, basically what they're saying is that, um, there's no rule out there that says, you know, y you won't get the same snowflake twice. Um, but I am guessing that it's just, you know, pretty random how they assemble themselves. Um, sorry for that car noise. If you guys heard that. Um, what you can and, and probably will notice is that um, there's different kinds of snow that uh, you've observed just without even being sciencey, right? And especially if you uh, like to ski, okay, you know, uh, some snow's better than others. Um, so we're going to talk about big wet flakes versus the small hard pellets and uh, what that really comes down to is uh, temperature, you know, um, snow that's just on the borderline of, uh, of being rain um, is going to be uh, obviously wetter. And then when it's um, much, much colder, okay, you can get these, these very small crystals, um, uh, like the powder, as they call it. And then um, these pellets that we're talking about here, there's a number of ways you get these little snow pellets. Uh, oftentimes the uh, snow will melt a little bit, then harden back up, or uh, several flakes will merge together. Um, lots of different ways that snow could come down. Ah, I thought I had some pictures in here. I apologize. Uh, sleet. All right. Sleet is rain that freezes into ice on the way down. But the important thing here is that it freezes in the air. So sleet starts as rain. This is the kind of like slushy stuff that you get, okay? You see this during cold weather. And if you're wondering what we're making, it's, it's sleet versus hail, okay? Because they're in sleet versus freezing rain. So um, there's there's three things that people tend to mix up. Um, so sleet and hail. Sleet is cold weather. Hail, as you'll see, is warm weather. Sleet is rain that freezes on the way down. Freezing rain. It it's rain the whole way, but it freezes when it hits the actual ground. Freezing rain is what you slip and fall on. Sleet just makes a slushy mess everywhere. There we go. Freezing rain is just that. It's rain that froze. And what happens is the air is, is there's a colder layer of air on the ground than, uh, than there is uh, where the precipitation is coming from. Grapple. Grapple. Love saying grapple. Bits of snow that have an icy crust on the outside of them. All right. Snow that has an icy crust on it. And um, soft hail. You know, there's so many different colloquial terms uh, for this stuff. But, um, you know, what, what we're looking at here is uh, basically, again, some borderline weather where, uh, you know, I think the temperature just alters the original, the original intent 
um, starts as snow and maybe warms up a little bit on the way down, um, rounds it out, and then it uh, freezes up again. Uh, but just on the outside, you get that crunchy little coating there, soft hail as they call it. Speaking of soft hail, what is hail? All right, hail's what happens with a thunderstorm. We had some hail over the summer. Uh, I don't know if you did, but I did. And um, this is a pretty crazy process. Um, we mentioned that these thunderheads can be very tall, okay? Uh, in the upper portions, then, um, you're looking at ice crystals as opposed to water droplets. So the bottom of the cloud is water. The top part of the cloud is ice crystals. And um, with the turbulence inside of the, the storm, um, they, inside of the cloud, sorry, uh, these crystals uh, come down and they get coated in water vapor and then they go back up. It really depends how many cycles, if you would, uh, they make as they're tumbling around inside of the cloud as to, to how big they get. Um, and then eventually they fall out and come down to earth. So hail are these chunks of ice, and as you've heard, you know, sometimes it can be the size of golf balls, as they say. Um, I've luckily never seen them that big, but we've seen some pretty good sized ones, but typically, you know, around the size of uh, peas or rice, you know, is fairly common. So um, those are, as we said, they, it's during thunderstorms, and uh, yeah. There you go.